church. Are you ready? Lord, put your hands together. Give God some praise this morning. If God's been good to you, you better give God some praise this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody, clap your hands to this song. You guys know it. And may the Lord move through us today. Clap louder than before. I wanna sing a little louder than before. I wanna jump higher than before. I wanna shout louder than before. Than before, I wanna sing a little louder than before. I wanna spin wilder than before. I gotta shout louder than before. Scream louder than before.
Father God. You're the only one who can who can fix this world.
Lord. Why did you want me to speak on for offering? And I felt to speak a little bit on you to be in fear. He wants you to have a joyful heart, to be happy as you give. And because I know that people, they become afraid and they get in fear and and they give out of fear too. But the Lord doesn't want you to worry. He so will take care of it all. to read from Philippians 4, 4 through 7, and it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So in his word, he tells us not to be anxious. He tells us not to be afraid. Because, but to, not only are we supposed to give with a cheerful heart, but we should give out of love. Because when we give, we're showing the Lord worship. We're showing him that he, that we love him. And we have to overcome any fear that we feel about giving. And I was, I was in a lot of fear about coming up here and taking up offering. But I had to take some time and tell the Lord and realize that this is for the Lord. And this is his will. And that I'm going to do it because I love him. So I encourage you this morning to do the same thing, to tell the Lord as you give that you're not going to have weary thoughts but a cheerful heart, and you're going to just give because you love him. <laughs> the, the ushers can pass the plates now. And Cameron has prepared... Um, musical arrangement for offering um, so we can go ahead and play that as they pass
We're going to pray for the offering now. So if you'll close your eyes and bow your heads. Lord, I thank you this morning that everything that was given, Lord, I pray that it would go to do your will and to do your work. We pray over this offering, Lord. I pray that you will just use it for whatever you have planned. And I pray, Lord, that your presence will be here. Thank you, Sophia. Maybe you don't know what's going on. This is Youth Sunday. Every Sunday, there's a fifth Sunday. Our young people run the service. Give God praise for the young people. God is so good. You know, we have to go beyond just coming to church. We have to go beyond just going through the motions. A lot of people use the word religion. Religion is where someone goes through the outward motions, but their heart is far from God. And God wants that relationship deep in our heart. He wants to help us overcome and get victory in, in areas in our life. He really is concerned. That's why he went to the cross to die for your sin. Not that you would eternally have to pay for your sin, but that he would pay for it and you would develop a relationship with him. Be restored back to the spirit of God and walk with God. And listen to God. Everybody say, God speaking. God speaking in our lives this morning. Hallelujah. I just feel a, a lot of a family members are good. It's good to see our church family. Some of y'all been out. Many of them are on vacation. But you're here today. And I feel a unity in the house. Amen. I feel a unity in the spirit. Uh, will you just bow your head for a moment or, or close your eyes and just focus on the Lord? Focus on Him and your relationship with Him. Everyone has failure. Everyone has weakness. But what God did is God made heaven and earth. He created all things. And see, God, just because man sinned and failed, doesn't mean God's purposes have failed. The earth is, is, is still in existence. The birds are sing, singing today because they did not sin. The animals didn't sin. All it takes is for man to come in line with God's purpose and it will produce good. Hallelujah. But because of our fallen nature, we, we seek a union with God. We want more of His Holy Spirit. There's only one Spirit of God in the world, one Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of God at work in our lives. If you want to become holy, you are holy as you dwell with Him. All the other spirits in the earth are fallen spirits. And they're calling us and using our sin nature to steal, kill, and destroy from us. But God, He came to give you life and it more abundantly. Amen? And I want you to see that abundant life. I don't care what's standing in front of you today. I don't care failures. I don't care if you've used substances to make yourself feel better. All you need to know is that they're taking advantage of you and making money off of your weakness. But God, God's plan is greater. God's plan is holy. God's plan is just. His ways are higher than our ways. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he wants to restore you. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm at rest. Song says, I'm going to rest in the Lord. I'm going to fly in my soul. I'm going to soar like the eagle soars. And I will rest in the Lord. Justin, are you out there? Justin, can you come play drums for me? Hallelujah. God is so good. How many of y'all want to rest in the Lord? We got to rest in his goodness. He's got, he wants you to soar with him. He wants you to go higher. I don't know when our nation or when people have given up on going higher. We can always do better. We can always ask God to help us. You can't do it in your own strength. You will always fail. But God sends his Holy Spirit to help you in every instance. Hallelujah. God
God is wanting to touch you today. The Spirit of the Lord, it's all around you. He wants to be in you. He wants to live in you. He wants to speak to you every day. Hallelujah. That's how the Word was written. The Word, God spoke in the hearts of men and they put it down on paper so that they would know His will, His desire, His purpose. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. I'm going to rest in the Lord. I'm going to fly in my soul. I'm going to soar like the eagle soars. And I will rest in the Lord. See, girls, I'm going to rest. The Lord told me, don't you get weary, and I'm, I'm going to give you rest. I have a strong hand to hold, just stand and be bold. Come while you're breathing my breath, say it, I'm going to rest. give God a praise this morning we're resting in you Jesus we love you Jesus we praise you Jesus God you are so good you are so awesome you are so holy I want that relationship with you I don't want to go through the motions I I want you to speak to my heart I want you to help me in my pain oh God men of abuse people of abuse God men without God are wicked God but God with with you they repent with you they apologize with you they want righteousness hallelujah Jesus how many of y'all want righteousness that simply means one thing I like the right over the wrong everybody say righteousness I don't always do right but I want God to tell me when I'm wrong I want to repent when I hurt others I want to repent there's been times whenever, whenever I exploded or my emotions were out of control. And I want, I want to repent. I want to make it right. Hallelujah. And how many of y'all know God's mercies are new every day to let you start a new day? I thank you, God, that you give us new days. Like the sun rises in the morning and it sets at night. God, we can go from, from yesterday to today. We don't got to keep living over and over our pain. Because, God, you said to forget those things which are behind and to press forward hallelujah everybody say press forward we can talk about what happened yesterday and that's what happens when we people don't apologize or they don't come to us we live in yesterday in our pain 
But when we forgive, we are able to go forward. And somebody in this room is going to go forward. Brother Robert, will you come here? Yep. Yep. When you walked in the door, the Lord said it's time for you to go forward. And there is a change happening. There is a change happening. See, you're going to get sick of this other and you're going forward. Because God is making you into a leader. A, young, a man that's going to lead people out of bondage. Amen. But first, it's got to start with you. Uh, sometimes you see yourself the wrong way. You see yourself as a failure. But God doesn't see you that way. God sees what you will be, not what you were. Amen. The Bible says that, that, that we were adulterers. And many of us, we were whoremongers and we were thieves. But then it gives three words. But such were some of you. But now you are washed. Now you are delivered. Now you are saved. Meaning your desires have changed. You don't want the old life. You want the new life. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for Robert. I thank you, God, for the newness of God. I thank you, God, he lets go of the old. Old patterns break off of him. Thank you, God, for the anointing and your power. Thank you, God, we feel your spirit right now. I come in agreement with my brother. He's going forwards and not backwards. All of the pain of the past, I command it to let him go. In the name of Jesus. I love you, Robert. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Love of God. Well, I'm excited today because today the youth pastor is going to preach. That's David Barclay up there. Amen. It's going to be a good sermon. Some understanding. Amen. But before we go to that, and I want to welcome our guest. If you're a guest, we want to welcome you here at Real Church. We love you. We love you very much. I want you to get the guest members bag. We want to be your family. We want to go through hurt with you. We want to lift you up when times are hard. We want to help in every area. Amen. We bring order. God is ordered. How many of y'all happy God just didn't fling Adam and Eve into a garden with no food? Well, we wouldn't be here if he flung them into a garden with no food. Hallelujah. That's why we got to do things in order, in God's order. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Can you imagine Adam being put in the garden and everything there for him? All the food he needed, walking with God, God is supplying. God supplies for us. And so we're, we're excited about that. I want you to watch this next little video because it's going to tell you what the next sermon series we're going into. We've been preaching on the psyche or the broken soul. And uh, I'll resume that next Sunday. Um, and if you haven't got those messages, you can find them online. It's been a powerful, powerful teaching on how to deal with hurt. You're a three-part uh, three being. You're a spirit being. Everybody say spirit. spirit. Then you're a soul. That's your mind, will, and emotions. Your spirit is the morality of God. It is made in the image of God. You were made spirit first, and then God blew the spirit into a body, and Adam became a living soul. That word living soul means you have choices to make your life. How many of y'all know our choices can affect our life? They do. And then we have soul pain. And not just our choices, sometimes other people's choices affect our life. Meaning when people do things against us or their sin nature happens, we can become wounded in our soul. And God cares about that. And your soul has three parts. It's your mind, your emotions, and your will. And our mind, it, it doesn't easily forget. Our emotions, we can... We can Cram them in a box because we don't want to feel pain. But if you don't feel pain, you don't feel love. Hear me? You've got to let it come up and out and God to heal it. But this next series I'm really excited about. It's going to be a corporate series. I'm happy to see, see a lot of our adults here. I need the adults here on Sunday to be able to do what we're about to do. And this is a necessity in the times that we're living in. And uh, so watch this little video and I'm going to tell you more about it.
So what's coming is we're going to be teaching on, on to adults too because many, many, um, we got people in America that don't know what adulthood is. Um, I, God led me to a book from Harvard that talked about that people are living in endless adolescence. Our system is not causing them to grow up. And now we have parents raising young people that the young people are in end endless adolescence. And what we think being an adult in this country, if I say you're an adult, you know what that means to you, most people? I get to drink. I get to run off and do whatever I want. I'm now legal. I can do all the wicked things in the world. That does not make you an adult. Actually, that, that comes to still kill and destroy adulthood. And so what happens is, is all of our young people think they're adults. Some of them, they, they want to be like adults. And they, they think that you've got to be sexual to do that. You've got to do all these things. And God has a different plan. He has a different plan of what mature adult people do. And so um, we're... We want the parents here, we want you and people that are adults that didn't have strong homes, or even if you had a strong home, that doesn't mean necessarily that you feel like an adult. How many of y'all are grown-ups in here and don't always feel like an adult? I, I, I still don't. I wish I was in kindergarten sometime with some graham crackers and some chocolate milk, amen? Hallelujah. But, but there is something that needs to happen, and, and you, might, you might be a young person, age 13 to 20. What we're doing is um, we're going to have Sunday morning services about this, and then Sunday night, we want families to come back and people to come back. Adults will be on, the, on, on a side of the teaching called insight adulthood, meaning um, that you're going to get insights of what adults do, what adulthood is, the responsibilities of adulthood. And, and it's going to deal with topics like, what do you do when someone's done everything for you? Sister Keisha, one of our, our leaders, she was talking about that her mom had done everything for her and, when, and, and whenever her mom passed away, Keisha didn't know how to do anything. She didn't know how to pay a bill. She didn't know how to go to work. She didn't know just anything and, and how devastating it was. And we've got a lot of young people and adults out here. You're, you were devastated by society. And so we're going to teach that for our adults. And you don't need to be ashamed because there's always stuff to learn. Amen? There's always stuff to learn. No matter which, where, what level we're at, we're always learning to do things more efficiently. And then we have insight adults, okay? I-N-C-I-T-E. That is what we're doing. We want to insight age 13 to 20 to not stay in adolescence forever. Age 13 to 20, people don't know this, but, you know... Uh, a, a, a lot of our founders and a lot of the people that set out to even found this nation, they were young people. They were in their 20s. John Quincy Adams, one of our presidents, he was age 13 and was the ambassador to France for this country. He knew 13 languages. And what we've done is we've got 35-year-olds that don't know how to clean their room. We got people sitting in adulthood forever. We've got all sorts of people grown up in this country and we are totally dependent on the government like it's our mama. Everybody say, God is our father. Mm -hmm. Church is the bride, but even God ain't my mama. You know what God told Abram to do? He told him to step out away from his family and to walk with God, to walk with him. And walk down, be thou made perfect. Grow up before me. And so that's what this is going to be about. And church family, I need you here. Um, we'll have the Sunday night individual classes for adults and one for the youth. And the youth are going to begin to, to walk, walk forward. Do you know in your Bible the word for youth, both in the Greek and the Hebrew, you know what, what age group that is? Youth in the Bible is all the way up to age 40. In the Bible. So you're still a youth if you're learning. Amen. Amen. So all the way up to age 40, there's still youth. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and we're still going because actually your body and your mind doesn't stop chemically changing until around 40. So, so we're learning. You're not a failure. Say that out loud. I'm not a failure. So the final ceremony, we're going to have ages 13 to 20 um, that want to come before the church. We're doing a final ceremony that talks about um, um, them becoming young adults, that they're not children, they can do things. Long time ago when people were in rural communities and the farms, it took 
um, uh, the, the young people worked on that farm and they did about 30 to 40 percent of the work with their parents. What we're doing is we're not letting anybody do anything because of failure. Well, I want you to know this. If you are under your house and your mom and dad's paying the rent, I'd rather you fell at home before you go out 22 years old and fell at your rent, ruin your credit. Everybody say, we're going to have some failure. Okay? And we're going to talk to the adults about not scolding their young person because they have failures. Amen? But rather encouraging them. If you scold them, guess what? They're not going to come talk to you no more. And there's a place. When they're young, we tell them what to do. Age, age, um, before age 13, we're benev benevolent dictators. Everybody say, the toddler doesn't rule us. We tell the toddler what time to go to bed. We tell the toddler to eat their broccoli, right? You know, if you watch Disney Channel right now, they've got children counseling adults. She said, boss, baby, I was thinking of Raven. I, I, I watched that, and Raven's like, I don't know who I should choose and where I should go in my life. And the three children around her, we think you should choose him, Raven. Why? Raven's an adult and doesn't know how to choose a, a righteous man or a right kind of man. Raven is always in all this chaotic stuff. You know, the Bible talks about that. It says, in the last days that you'll look for children to rule over you. Why? Because they're smarter. And some of you adults in here, you need to stop dumping on your children like they're your best friend. They are nowhere ready to be listening to all your stuff. Okay? You need to understand they are children. Everybody say, we got an adult. Okay? And so we're learning what that is. We're learning what that is. Now, I, I, I thought this was funny. Whenever I looked up the word adulthood now, the definition, you know, talks about managing your life, making right decisions, fixing wrong ones. Amen? That's part of responsibility. But when I put in the word adulthood and adulting, some people say that's hate speech now. It's hate speech to ask people to grow up. It's not condemnation. I'm still trying to grow up. Amen? We're all growing up. And so it's going to be a powerful series. Starts the 21st. I want you to be here for it. Amen? Um, it looks like the children were dismissed to Children's Church. If you have a child age 12 and under, they can go out to Children's Church. God is good. If you have little bitty ones, we have the nursery. Yes. Just nursery, no children's church today, all right? So, um, um, but we're excited about it, and we're always trying to give tools to people to go forward and to overcome. Everybody say, no condemnation. no condemnation. Condemnation says you're trash. Condemnation says you're a failure. Condemnation says you can't do anything. Just sit down the pit and die. That's what the devil wants. Conviction. Everybody say conviction. Conviction, conviction happens. And conviction means I am convinced with God's help, I can do better. That's what convinced, conviction means. It comes from the word convinced. Amen. You can't do it on your own. You need God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to turn to the youth pastor today. And we're going to hear the word of God. Everybody welcome uh, Pastor David Barclay up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the word. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, my man, my man, my man, my man. God is amazing, amen? amen? I say God is amazing, amen? amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, it's good to be back into the house of the Lord. It's good to be here again. And I'm listening to Apostle. He's over here preaching my notes. <laughs> That's how God works, amen? We always have a confirmation. Glory be to God. Well, before I get started, y'all look like y'all just had some breakfast. Kind of laid back there. So let's stand up for a minute. Hallelujah. Let us stand up for a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Apostle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now I'm going to do something here that we're going we're gonna to honor God. We're going to honor God. Today I'm going to preach to you about what it means to be born again. What it means to have a relationship with God. We've taken it too lightly. We look at it just like a rudimentary, ordinary thing. 
But you must realize what God did for you and I in order for the relationship to be established. I don't want no fakers or pretenders. I want those who love God to raise your hands. Hallelujah. To you visitors, just so you'll know, you might hear me holler. You might hear me shout. You may see me raise my hands. You may see me, hallelujah, do a dance, fall out in the floor. I may even roll in the floor. Hallelujah. Could I get, could I get Justin and Prophet John and Josiah just for a minute? Hallelujah, just for a minute. I want to set an atmosphere. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hallelujah. What we're doing here to you visitors is we're giving praise to God. We're giving him the praise that we all owe him. You don't owe me nothing, but you owe God everything. Huh? Look this way, young people. I got my eyes on you. Look this way and raise your hands. There's no excuse. He's not going to overlook anyone. Blessed be his name. Say, blessed be his name. Say, holy is the Lord. And by the way, we speak in tongues in this church. We are unapo- I am unapologetic about my relationship with God. He brought me out of the dust and mire. He saved my soul. He changed my name, gave me a reason for living. Ah, ah, it's time to have a Holy Ghost parade. The LGB and the Qs, uh, they're walking around shaking the bottoms of no clothes on. Hallelujah, I got the fire of the living God. This past Friday night, Dan Dan, to you, to you who don't know him, Brother Jim Lovett. This past Friday night, Rachel, you asked me how prayer was. I fell in love with God all over again. Yes! Can I get a yes? Can I get a glory? Somehow, faith, he touched me in a way that I've never been touched before. Hey, glory. Say glory. Come on, Zane, say glory. Come on, Kyler, say glory. I want the young and the old open your mouth and say glory be to God. Some of y'all didn't know it. Some of y'all didn't know it. But the devil had a hit out on your life. Some of y'all didn't know it. You shouldn't be here. Some of y'all didn't know it. That the devil was trying to take you out. But the goodness and the grace of God. Justin, I was there in the prayer meeting. When you asked God for the anointing to play the guitar. And I was there when the anointing came over you. So what I want you to do, Justin, is open up your spirit. Ah, like a Friday night at the prayer revolution. And I want you to begin to give worship and praise to God. Now you may not be able to play the guitar, but you can clap your hands. you to think about. I want you to... Jeremiah! Jeremiah. I'm going to preach in a minute, but I got to get my praise out. This past Friday night, God reminded me why he's God. This past Friday night, God reminded me why he's God. To you visitors, I want you to know that we are praying.
praise in church. Because we love our holy God. Hey! Come on, Jamie Kyle, get up here with me. I celebrate you, Michael. I celebrate you. Get on up here, Michael. know this man I want you to know that God has done a work in his life and we're gonna preach about it tonight yay took him off the metam and the fetam and the means took the taste of the cigarette out of his mouth then he filled him Filled him. Then he filled him. Then he filled him. What you doing? We're bragging on God. Everybody been talking about the president and the devil. Come on, Tony, get up here. Come on, Tony. Celebrate you, Tony. I was praying for you. She, I'm telling everybody business, it's all right. She couldn't put the cigarettes down. But one Friday night, the Holy Ghost, she received the Holy Ghost and it blew on her like a wind. something for you. We're going to make us a line. We're going to do us a Jericho thing's remark. Yay! Yes, sir. Come on, Zane. Come on, Kyle. Let's do it.
See, while you're walking around this building, God told Abram to walk thou before me being made perfect. You have to take the steps. The preacher can't take the step for you because the preacher cannot fulfill your relationship with God. Many of you, God's calling you to go to other levels. He's calling you to move forward. And just by getting out in that aisle, you don't know. You're releasing yourself forward. Everybody say this, I'm going forward into the depth of God. Hallelujah. Musicians, stay at your post. Don't change the flow yet. Don't change the flow yet. We're going to have an illustration sermon. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm crazy for God tonight. Uh -huh. I don't care what people think or say. Hallelujah. He's my God and I love him. 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 Yeah. Are 
Are you going with God tonight? That's it, Stephanie Bethel. That's it, that's it, that's it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I told Justin that barbecue was so good that I'm gonna pray your baby in. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Break this thing down about being born again. Musicians, stay at your post. And don't you not get, do not get comfortable in your seats. This is a participation message. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let's warm it up. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, I begin to ask the Lord what he wants me to preach about on the fifth Sunday. And he said that he wanted me to talk about what it means to be born again. Say born again. born again. Born again. And the Lord began to walk me through some scriptures here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we receive the anointing today, ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive what the Spirit is expressly saying in this house. Let the anointing flow and break every yoke and destroy every chain. In Jesus' name. Alan and Nadine, welcome back. Second Corinthians is my first chapter. Second Corinthians, fourth chapter, verses one through four. Please bear with me. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel your presence, Lord. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, walking, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience, say every man's conscience, in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light, say the light, of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, this is it, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory in the face of Jesus. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels uh, that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Now Paul is speaking to the church and he's talking about this glorious gospel. He's talking about how God organized and commanded for the light of his glory to shine. Now you got to understand, you, you see that word light, but that word encompasses all the power and the glory of heaven. Yeah, that word light encompasses all of the truth, all of the authority of heaven. Oh my God in heaven. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And he called the light to shine. Now, and studying this, I'm trying to figure out how, how did God cause light to shine out of darkness? Anybody want to guess? Yes, and yes, yes, and yes, yes, and yes. Let's take it further. Amplified, the amplified. For God who said, let the light shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory and majesty of God clearly revealed in the face of Jesus. That's the amplified. So what he did, he took all of the power and the glory. 
He took all of the authority and the revelation. Yes, he did. And he wrapped it in human flesh. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Every ability, every authority, every unction, every jurisdiction came in the form of Jesus Christ. Yes, he did. And he sent it to a dying world that was full of darkness. Hey, now let's go to John 1, 1 through 17. Come on, stay with me now. Say the light to shine. Say the light to shine out of darkness. Whew. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel old school in here. I feel old school, Holy Ghost. I know there's only one Holy Ghost, but I feel old school here. I'm going to slow down here. I feel like preaching. I'm going to run away in a minute. Say glory. glory. Say glory. Jesus, full of the power, full of truth, full of the fire, full of the authority, came in flesh to reveal all of heaven. Say all of heaven. In the beginning was the word. Uh-huh. Keep going. And the word was God, the same that was in the beginning. Papa Sally, could I, could I borrow you for a second? Could, could we get him a microphone for me, please? Because I'm about to run away. I, I need me a reader so I don't run too fast. What it means to be born again. Say, neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Do you know what it means to be born again? Yeah, glory. You can read it from my text here. Read it on. In the beginning, in the beginning, You know, all day today, the devil's been fighting us. I put my first suit on and my, my, my zipper boat busted wide open. Had to change my clothes. Glory be to God. But I told the devil, we're going to preach this sermon because we're going to leave here with an understanding of the principles of what it means to be born again. Not just saying a prayer, but understand the significance of what God did so you could be born again. In the beginning was the Word, hey. and the Word was God, with God, and the Word was God. Yes. The same was in the beginning with uh, God. Yeah. All things were made by Him. Yes. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Everything, everything that was made was made by God. Go on, go on, go on. In Him was life. Yes. And the life was the light. Of man. Now hold on, hold on. In him is life, and that life is the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehends not. Go on. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Right there, always know. Always know that the truth will have a witness. You hear what I say? What did I say? The truth will always have a witness. I'm going to deal with that later. Come the, on. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Yeah. He was not the light. He wasn't the light but was sent to bear witness of that light. Yes! That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now remember in Corinthians, God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Uh -huh. And John bore witness 
that Jesus is the light. Uh-huh. Can, you get the, can I get an amen? amen? Are you with me so far? Yes. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Yes. And the world knew him not. Yeah. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Listen now. But as many as received him, yes. to them gave he power Hold on. to become. To those who would believe, to those who would receive, he gave them the authority, hey, to become the sons and the daughters of God. Once you receive the Lord Jesus Christ for who he is, you are now grafted into the family of God. And it doesn't matter your background, your knowledge, your intellect, what you think or what you don't know. You are now a child of God. Which you are born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, no, of the will of man. Hold it right there. But of God. Now that's that's the blood. <laughs> that's the firstborn. You know the will of flesh. Now I met my wife. We had a son. Will of the flesh. Not out of the will of men. But but what now? Of what of what of? The will of what? The will of God. To you visitors. Hold on. To you visitors. We are fanatic about God because what He has done is he has saved us, he has raised us, he's changed our narrative, he's changed our name, and by his will, he erased all of our sin. By his will, he changed everything. It's not just a simple prayer. It is an experience. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among Oh! Oh, the word, the word was made flesh. The word of God was made flesh. At, mm, and we beheld his glory. And we beheld his glory. Hold on, hold glory. on. Hold on. Let me get this. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. The word of God. The literal word of God. They just released another, I got to get Prophet John the papers from NASA. They just re released another imagery of the universe. The God that spoke the universe into existence. Who rides upon the wings of the wind. Who made the cherubs. Who created the stars in their splendor and glory. Who designed you and I. The very word of God was made flesh and dwelt among men. Now that word of God that dwelt among us was the light of God, seeing Jesus Christ. And we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Listen now, for time's sake, for time's sake, I gotta make this into a book. Let me hurry. They beheld his glory. They beheld his glory. What does that mean? Let me hurry. Let me hurry. Keep on going. John bear witness of him and cried saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is prepared, preferred. preferred before me. For he was before me. And of his fullness have all received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Listen, listen. The revelation of the law showed us where we fell short, revealed the heart of God and the principles of right and wrong. 
But because man is a fallen being, listen up, listen up, it is impossible to keep the law. But Jesus came as commanded by God the Father, hallelujah, with the full provision of heaven to enable you and I to live, hallelujah, in a way that no man has ever lived before. When you are born again, there is a transformation and a change, hallelujah. There is an ability beyond your own self beyond your intellect see this is something you can't think about it let me let me stop right there you can figure out the Pythagorean theorem but you cannot figure out God you have to believe by faith glory be unto God and now and now through Jesus Christ we have received grace and truth Say grace and truth. Let's hurry on. Let's hurry on. Matthew 3, 11 through 17. Let's hurry. Let's hurry. Laying the foundation here for you. Glory to God. Then we're going to tie it all together. Give the youth a hand while you're finding your scriptures. Way to go, Travis. David. KJ. Shamari. All of the youth. Thank you, Shamari. Come on, you got it, Papa Shelley? I indeed baptize you with water into repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, hey! whoso, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yes! Whose fan is in his hand, yeah. and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Yes. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee uh -huh. to Jordan, yeah. and John to be baptized uh -huh. of him. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, yes. and cometh thou me to me? And Jesus answered, saying unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to, be, to fulfill all righteousness. Yes. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water. Yes. And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending yes. like a dove yes. and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now, now we see here that John is in the doing his thing, uh, organized by the Holy Spirit. John, full of the Holy Spirit from his mother womb. Now he sees Jesus. He baptizes him, baptizes him. Remember now, John baptized Jesus. John baptized Jesus. He talked about the one that was coming, who was mightier. Hallelujah. But, 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 but he will do something greater than water baptism. He would give them the fire and the Holy Ghost. Let's go to John 3 26 through 36. Just laying a foundation here. Then we're going to tie it all together. Say glory be unto God. Musicians strike me up a holy chorus. Say hallelujah. Three twenty-six through 36. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Higher, and they came unto deeper, John, wider. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. Yeah. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him. From heaven. You can't receive it unless it's been given from heaven. Keep that in mind now. Let me skip on down here, Papa Shelley. Yeah, yeah, your, not about yeah yourselves uh -huh. bear me witness that I say I am not the Christ, but that I am sent from him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Yes. 
But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and bear him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must he increase. Must increase. But I, I must, must decrease. decrease. He that came in from above is above all. He that is earthly, of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Say above all. Above all. Say above all. above all. Let's hit John. Let's hit John 3, 1 and 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. St. John, the third chapter. Say glory. Glory. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Yes. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art the teacher come from God. For no man can do the miracles that thou hast done except God be with him. Yes. And Jesus answered him, saying unto him, Very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born again, uh -huh. he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? And he entered the second time into his mother's womb yeah. and be born. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You got to be born of what? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Uh -huh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Mm. The wind bloweth where it is bleeding, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but it cannot see tell whence it come from or whether it is going. Yes. So he is everyone that is born of the spirit. Yes. Let's go to John 14 and 6. Put it on the screen for them. And also John 10 and 9, Romans 10 and 9. Then we're going to hit Colossians and tie it together. Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. John 14 and 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let me tie this together real quickly. Listen carefully. God commanded the light to come from heaven, sent in full authority, wrapped in the flesh, in the form of Jesus Christ. Jesus came and was revealed. Hallelujah. And after the miracles that he began to do, the light began to shine of the revelation of who he is. Hallelujah. And then there came the way by which, by which all can come unto God. Hallelujah. Not after the deeds of the flesh, but after the spirit. Say after the spirit. Say after the spirit. Say after the spirit. Because spirit gives birth to spirit. Hallelujah. And those that receive this light, uh, hallelujah, they are now saved and redeemed. We see the workings of the miracles. We see here that the disciples of John the Baptist are saying, Lord, what's going on? He's doing all of these things. Short, long story short, John begins to explain that he is not the Messiah, but the one that is doing the works are is the Messiah. And he began to under explain to them that that which is from heaven, say that which is from heaven, is superior from that which is of earth. When you are born again, you are now a citizen of heaven. You are born, hallelujah, not after the flesh or the will of men, but after the will of God. Say the will of God. What does it mean to be born again? What does it mean? What, what, what does that mean when I say this prayer? What is actually going on? 
Keep reading, keep reading. Let's get on to Colossians. Hey! Romans 10 and 9, I'll read that one. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the key. You must believe and you must receive. Go ahead, Papa Shelley, Colossians 1, 12 through 18. Giving thanks. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of his saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Yes! In whom we have redeemed redemption through his blood. Yes. Even the forgiveness of sin. Uh -huh. Who's who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Yes. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body of the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the give God a praise right there. Come on, give him a praise. Give God a praise right there. He's saying that the works of Jesus delivered us from the powers of darkness. Uh-huh. And that we, we are the saints. We've cut off sin. And now we are walking in the light. Hallelujah. He delivered us from the powers of darkness. When you are born again, you are delivered from the authority, the power, and the jurisdiction of the enemy of your soul. You remember some time ago, I preached to you all about the wrestling. And one of the one of the Greek words about the principality, about the powers, had to do with jurisdiction. Do you know what the word jurisdiction means? They have authority in a certain area. Okay? Long story short. In Colossians, we see the meaning, the true meaning of what it means to be born again. The enemy no longer has authority over you. The enemy no longer has jurisdiction over you. What are you sitting down for? When you receive Jesus, let me hurry. When you receive Jesus, you are born again, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Your grandpa may have been an alcoholic. Your grandma may have been a whoremonger. But oh, now the things have changed. Because why? Because why? He said to those, to those who would receive him, gave he the power and the authority to become the sons and the daughters of God. Let me break it down for you. My last name is Barclay. 
<laughs> hey, turn it up. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost here. My last name is Barclay. Say hello, Pastor Barclay. We laid down the foundation to those who would receive. Gave he the power to become the sons and the daughters of God. You see, everything that was in God, he sent it in Jesus. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I said everything that was in God. Bradley, he sent it in Jesus. Oh, Bryson, oh, Bryson, oh, Bryson. <sighs> Ponder this for a moment. Christian, all of the abilities that I have, I passed them on to Josiah when he was born. To be born again, not after the flesh, not after the will of man, but after the will of God. You know what that means? Alan, all of the power, all of the authority, an open heaven over Helen. Can I get a witness? I said an open heaven over Helen. Now, I'm gonna talk with y'all a little bit, then it's gonna get loud. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. It wasn't just light. It was the power of all of heaven. The authority of Elohim. El Elyon. It's not some simple prayer that somebody leads you in their flip-flops. This is a transforming power. It changes your destiny. What it means to be born again. Turn that music up. So powerful, David, that'll make a prostitute a missionary. It'll turn a drunkard into a preacher. Life transforming power. What does it mean to be born again? It means that you were taken out of the powers of darkness. David, what, Pastor David, what are the powers of darkness? What are the powers of darkness? Well, you got a murdering spirit. You got a lying spirit. You have the spirit of Antichrist. You have principalities and powers and demons. But when I receive Yeshua, when I receive Yeshua, when I receive him, Everything begins to change. When I receive
receive Yeshua, he begins to walk with me. Yay! When I receive him, he dusts off the old. So powerful is that it makes you a new creature. I need somebody to clap right there. again what does it mean to receive Jesus what does it mean how do I know well when you receive something from above it always changes everything below when you receive the gift of heaven it always transforms the earth yeah, 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 yeah. They were saying, they were saying, Rabbi, who is this? Who is this? What's going on? He's doing these miracles. He's doing these things. I don't understand, Rabbi. And John said, he is from the Father. Do you know? Do you know, Bryson, that when you receive Jesus, TJ, you are receiving the gift of heaven? Do you know that when you receive Jesus, you are receiving the gift of the Father? When you are born again, it's not just a simple prayer, but it is the power of heaven made available to you to change and transform wider brother david i just can't stop drinking brother david i just i just can't stop smoking brother david i just can't stop doing the drugs i got some good for you right here i got some good for you right here i got a life transforming power right here yeah 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 When I was praying and fasting about this service, the Lord told me that he's going to do some destiny transformations. Let me hurry. I want all of Refuge Youth up here in the line right now. What is this? What is this? Hey, what is going on here? As soon as Jesus began to do the miracle,